I've built and launched over 14 different apps in the past five years, and this is a step-by-step -step checklist of everything that I make sure to do before I launch a brand new app out into the world. Now, for some context, I'm not an app building expert. I am not a multimillionaire living on my yacht, sipping margaritas and sangria every single day because my apps are printing money. In fact, I'm quite the opposite. I'm a guy that's built 14 different apps and probably the first seven apps made absolutely no money, had no users, but then roughly the past four apps that I built, they've scaled to roughly like $3,000 of monthly revenue, which is something. So I'm definitely not claiming to be an expert, but chances are, if you're watching this video, I am closer in this whole app building journey to you than you are to some type of like multimillionaire app builder out there. So maybe my advice is gonna be more useful, maybe not. But now that the context has been established, now let's get into the actual content of the video where I talk about the various things that I make sure to do every single time I launch a brand new app. Okay, right, so the very first thing I do before launching a brand new app, honestly, before even building a brand new app is figuring out what the marketing strategy is. Do not fall into the trap of if you build it, they will come. If the product is good enough, the users will find you. That is total bullshit. That's a total lie. Don't believe that you need to make a plan on how you plan to get your app in front of the eyeballs of your eventual users or customers. For example, if you're going to market to Facebook groups or subreddits, literally make a list of every single Facebook group of every single subreddit that you plan to post in to market your product into. If you're going to be doing cold outreach to get your first list of users and for marketing, literally make that list of a hundred people that you were going to do some cold outreach to. If you're going to be doing social media, figure out the exact type of content that you're going to post and how many accounts that you're going to make to post them on. Shameless plug, but I am building an app called Yorbi, which is a social media marketing tool designed for a startup. And one of the big features that we have right now is a viral content database, which is literally a hand curated group of content that myself and my co-founder literally find on social media of marketing content that other businesses use to market their product, primarily their SaaS product on social media. So if you're looking for some creative inspiration on various ways to do social media marketing on social media, then definitely check out the app. And right now this viral content database is the main hero feature, but going forward, we have a huge roadmap of trying to add so many different tools, so many different features to truly create the ultimate social media marketing tool for startup founders like yourself. But with all that being said, really just figure out what your marketing plan is. Even myself for the first seven apps that I built, I've always thought like, oh, this is a great app idea. Let's just go build it. Spend weeks, maybe an entire month building it out. And then I'm like, how do I, how do I, how do I get users again? So then I end up just wasting an entire month building an app that ends up getting no users because I had no plan on how to get users from the beginning. So figure out your marketing plan from day one before even building your app. Number two is track literally everything about how your users are using your app. You want to use some type of analytics tool. Some popular options are post hog. That's my current favorite one. Mix panel amplitude. These are all other popular tooling that you can use to fire user analytic events when users interact with your apps in a certain way. You need to have this in your app from day one because if you don't, if anyone ends up actually using your app and you don't have this analytics built in, you have no idea how they're actually going to be using the app. You want to track what buttons are clicking, what features are looking into. If you have an onboarding process in the beginning, you want to see how far along in the onboarding process do they get? Do they end up quitting out anytime? Do they not even make it into the login screen? What's happening? Analytics is incredibly important. You need to have it. It is literally so, so, so high priority because without it, you're flying blind whenever you launch an app. You don't know how your users are using it. So make sure to add some type of analytics analytics tooling in there and track as many events as you possibly can to see how your users are using your app. The next thing that I make sure to do for every single app that I build is get someone other than yourself to test out the app. I know this sounds like really common sense. It's like, yeah, no shit, dude. But trust me, especially as a developer, I fall guilty to this as well. I spend so much time in building my app and oftentimes I'm just building in my little cave at my desk right here, being a little gremlin and nobody else knows about the app. Nobody else tests the app except for myself. And obviously if you are the one building your app, you know your app like in aside and out like the back of your hand you are an expert on how your app works and what the various workflows that your app will power but there's a very high chance unless you are a ui ux expert out there but chances are if you're a developer that's not really going to be the case but chances are if you give your app to a stranger they are not going to know how your app works so you really really need to make sure you get someone else to test out your application and film them and or if not a film at least watch them and use your app in real time so you can see where they get tripped up in the ui and ux oftentimes they're going to go down like an unhappy path, basically a path that you have never really navigated before. And they might push your app to handle certain edge cases or scenarios that you yourself don't test out because obviously in your mind, you're like, I'm just going to test out the happy path, the most logical way. Like a user is never going to make any mistakes, right? Wrong. And these strangers other than yourself that will test out your app, they're going to push your app to the limits and most likely cover a lot of additional bugs that you never knew existed beforehand. Especially if you are building a tool that is for non-developers out there, you want to get someone on the extreme end of the spectrum of really non-technical people. I'm talking borderline technology illiterate people to test out your application because if your end user is going to be a non-technical person, might as well get the extreme use case and, and make them 
then stress test your app to see how logical and how intuitive it is. Another thing that I spend a lot of time on whenever I build out an app is a good onboarding process. It doesn't matter if it's a mobile app or a web app, whenever you get some type of new user, I think it's really important to educate them on how your product works rather than just dumping them in blind being like, okay, you just logged in, you made an account, here's the app. Good luck. No, like you have some type of educational material in there to help them learn about how to use the app. Because once again, this builds upon the previous point where you think it's really intuitive and like so easy to use, but chances are you are gonna run into users who might not think that. So have some type of educational material present the problem, present how your app fixes that problem and guide them through the app. I think onboarding is really, really important. Next up, kind of similar as this, kind of building upon this onboarding process point that I just made right before this, I think it's really important also to collect your user email addresses into some type of email marketing service out there. Like truly one thing I really wish I focused more on in the beginning of my app building journey, basically whenever a user signs up for your app, create some type of trigger that will automatically take this new user that signed up for your application and save them into some email marketing software so that you can reach out to them in the future. Even if you don't think that you're going to reach out to them, trust me when I say that email marketing and email outreach to date is still probably one of the best methods to get in contact with your actual users, even if it doesn't feel like the sexiest one out there. And look, there are so many different email service providers to choose from, but the one that I personally have been using for the past two years or so is called Brevo, and they are the sponsor of today's video as well. What I particularly like about Brevo is the fact that they have a really good API support, but it's also intuitive and honestly easy enough to use from the actual web app itself, such that both myself or even my non-technical co-founder can go about it and use it seamlessly without any issues, which is not something I can say for all the other email service providers where either they have horrible developer support or they're way too deep into the developer realm and it's a bit more difficult to use for the non-devs out there. They also have the ability to create email flows and various marketing automations as well and also have SMS and WhatsApp messaging support too. I'm also personally a really big fan of their pricing model because a lot of other email service providers charge you based on how many contacts and users are going to be on your email service provider, which doesn't really make sense even if you don't send them any emails in a given month. And that never really made sense to me because what I'm paying for is not the contact management, but rather the number of emails that I send out. Brevo, on the other hand, primarily charges you based off the number of emails you send out, which makes a lot more sense in my mind. And they also have really, really generous contact list tiers for 100,000 in the free tier and 500,000 in the paid tier. If you're looking for an email and marketing solution that makes both developers and non-developers happy, then check out Brevo. I'll include a link to it in the description of this video. And once again, thanks to Brevo for sponsoring this portion of the video. And last but not least, my number one major, major piece of advice that I personally recommend that maybe not everyone agrees with, there's a lot of differing opinions on this one, is before launching your app, make sure to have payment support somewhere in your app. Really, at the end of the day, like, let's be honest, why are we making an app? We trying to make a business. We trying to get that bag, make that money. All right, in like a non-slimy way that came off a lot slimier than I anticipated, apologies. But truly, like if you're trying to build an app and you're trying to build a business out of your app, you need to test it with a paid tier. You need to see, is the problem that you're solving a big enough problem that people are willing to pay money for it? And I don't care how scary it is, you must, must, add some type of payment options into your application. And you can't just do it for $1 or $2. No, like make it like a actually decent amount of money, like whatever market rate is for the niche that you're building in, charge legitimate money. You need to do this. You need to test this out with real users. Like literally do not be afraid to charge money for your app. You need to do it. I know it's scary, but you gotta do it if you're trying to build a legitimate business out of it, okay? So have a good business model in mind, have a good pricing model in mind and make sure everything works flawlessly there. All right, so that is a quick list of literally everything that I do before I launch a brand and you app. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Let me know how I can help out. I'll try my best to respond to as many comments that I possibly can. Best of luck with the app building journey. It's hard. It's a long journey, probably way harder than you ever would think it will be, but I still think it's worth it in the end. Even though I haven't had any outside success so far, it's been pretty great and I'm still hoping that it'll all work out in the end. Thanks so much for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.